Oxford Podcast, episode number five. Yep. Just got back from the Atlantic Coast Classic in Daytona Beach. Yes. What a weekend. Busy, busy weekend. Yep. Finally starting to recover a little bit. How are you feeling? Uh, I'm getting there. It's been, yeah, it's been kind of a whirlwind coming back, but it was so much fun. Yeah. Have you had a chance to process it yet, do you think? Not really. Okay. I feel like I got back and I just hit the ground running with, you know, cool shit we've got going on here. I haven't had a chance to really reflect, but... I feel like this is going to be a good chance for us to process it, then. Yeah. Because I want to look back on this and think about the last couple of years, especially for you. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think many people know enough about you and your story and how you became the head coach, you know, like where you are now, just in your life in general. And um, the thing that I go back to is me first meeting you in East Atlanta. Yeah. And uh, you were, I think you were a student, were you? Yeah, I was still in nursing school. I just came like... I mean, my cousin invited me on Saturdays, but yeah. I wasn't... Yeah, used to come in on Saturdays. Yeah. And um, you were like, eventually I'll move to East Atlanta, I think, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, well, just come on Saturdays. And uh, you were training... Where were you training at? Just a I just had my gym at the dorm. Okay, dorm room at gym. Emory. That's crazy. I forget yeah. how young you are. And then... Um, you're doing that, and you're coming in, and I remember coaching you. I don't think I coached you very much because I think still we had coaches over at East Island mm-hmm. at the time. But I remember coaching you a couple of times, and I, I, it always stays with me the first thing that you said when I was coaching you. And it seems like a different person now. Mm-hmm. Like It seems like Savannah, who was somebody's cousin, and the Savannah I know now are completely different people. And their mindset, mm-hmm. the way that they – you know, just go about life on yeah. different people. Literally two different people. Mm-hmm. Like I don't even see it as the same person, but I know that it is just instinctively from you just. And I said, teaching you how to do a pull-up yeah. or something like that. And you literally just said, I'll never get a pull-up. Looked at me in my face and said, I'll never get a pull-up. And I was just like. Talk about someone who just didn't believe in themselves, even an ounce Mm-mm. Pull-ups aren't that hard. <laughs> and, well, not even that. I think as well, looking at what that means and why you said it, it wasn't even about the pull-up, right? It was yeah. about you not being able to do something, mm-hmm. me telling you you can't do it and trying to help you get it. And instead of you being like, yeah, help me, your attitude was don't even bother. Yeah, because it's not going to happen. And you almost embarrassed. Like it's an embarrassment level that you like – don't even bother because I'm never going to get it, yeah. which means like you trying to dismiss me and get me away. Basically, yeah. like get away from me right? because you bring an attention to something that I can't do, mm-hmm. right, compared to who that is now. And I mean, obviously, you don't just overnight change. There's probably still elements of that that you fight every day, right? Yeah. That person's still in there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like if we're doing – I think I see it sometimes. I see you battling it sometimes. Where, like, you won't be able to get something and you'll, like, just have to go away and take a minute and come back. Or you'll have a, a bad day on the movement and you'll take it personally. You know, I still see elements of that person, mm-hmm. but that person has been disappearing pretty quick for the last two years. Yeah. Is it only been two years? It's only been two years. Okay, so from the person that told me I'll never get a pull-up two years ago, that was a student... Uh, in nursing school, um, just started doing fitness stuff like this, to somebody who did muscle-ups in a competition, mm-hmm. handstand walks, 140, 135 snatch, what was it? 130. 130 snatch. Mm-hmm. Um, finished top half of the RX-ish. Ish. Yeah. Competitive yeah. in the RX division. Mm-hmm. Um, what a journey, right? What was the catalyst for that, you think? I think it was, I really think last summer, it was just a three-month breakdown of the person I used to be turning into the person I am now. And it was... I don't know. I feel like I hit rock bottom in some ways, but not in like a dramatic bad way. And then 
just climbed out of it this whole new person. I quit my job, which it took me about three months to come to terms with the fact that I needed to quit my job. I couldn't work part time. Mm. I couldn't work occasionally and do this a little bit. I had to either decide, am I a nurse or am I going to be head coach of Oxford? And once I made that decision, I feel like it changed everything. And there are other things, you know, we went to Mayhem, we did a competition yeah. that I competed in as an individual and that that failure changed so many things in my life. And after that, it was just like, well, I'm not going back now. I'm not scared of anything anymore. Yeah, it's funny. It's funny how you describe it because you describe it as like a rock bottom. Mm -hmm. But it was more you seeing failure for what it is, mm -hmm. right? So you've got all these things like – outside pressures of you've done all this studying to become this nurse and like the certain level of prestige of like I went to college and I get to do this thing and, and then um, in terms of you know sports and being competitive it's really easy to just do a comfortable thing like go into a competition so like you'd work you'd work to become a nurse you could go and be a nurse it'd be really comfortable mm -hmm. right you could hang out and compete a little bit and go and do scale division, intermediate division, and do okay, handle all the movements well, and it'd be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I think, to me, the main catalyst of everything that you have done over the last year was signing up for something that completely took you out of your comfort zone. Yeah. So you did something that scared the hell out of you. Mm -hmm. And then you went to the competition. You went to Mayhem on the Mountain. Compete in the RX women's division as an individual. Finish last. Mm -hmm. The worst thing that you thought could happen, happened. Yeah. And you were fine. Mm -hmm. And you were better than you were a year before that. Because you got to see that all that shit about finishing last was all just stuff that you made up in your mind. And nobody cared. Right. Everybody around you was just proud of seeing what you actually achieved. And you were proud mm -hmm. of seeing what you achieved. You're like, if I didn't sign up for this and I didn't throw myself out of my comfort zone, I wouldn't have got these movements. I wouldn't be this strong. I wouldn't be this fit. Mm -hmm. And I finished last and it didn't matter. It wasn't, the yeah. failure wasn't final. It wasn't fatal. No. And if, if I had let, I don't even look back at that and think of it as, Honestly, I don't remember I got last place. I don't think of it as a failure. I just look at that experience, and the only thing I remember is me before and after, and I remember the growth. Mm -hmm. And I think that can be said for any situation that made me uncomfortable. Those have been the situations that have changed my life. So quitting a job, doing this competition, those are the most uncomfortable things I've ever done. Looking back on it, I just see that as the biggest period of growth in my life in such a short amount of time. Yeah. The person that said I'll never get a pull-up really just doesn't exist anymore, no. right? Now it's, well, what's next? Mm -hmm. What am I going to sign up for next that scares the hell out of me? Mm -hmm. What is it? And since that time, we've done Olympic lifting competitions. We've done... This last competition, which was definitely a level up mm -hmm. from Mayhem on the Mound, right? It was oh, yeah. much bigger. It was much more intense. Mm -hmm. It's much more professional, it felt yeah. like. And you were competing against a bigger range. Like, how many people were in your guys' category? I mean, it was over 75 people. Yeah, yeah. 25 teams 25 of three. Teams, yeah. 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 So, and then it's just crazy to think, like, somebody that said I'll never get a pull-up was doing bar muscle-ups in a competition. Like, mm -hmm. the level of difference in such a short time. Yeah. Because really that change hasn't happened over the whole two years. It's been mm -hmm. maybe the last year that it yeah. really took off. And when I, you know, was talking to you about potentially being the head coach and doing that stuff, I don't think you would be the head coach now without going to Mayhem on the Mountain and without finishing last. And without being like, well, if finishing last here was the worst thing that could have happened and I'm a better athlete because of it, mm -hmm. what if I do quit my job? and I do go and do this, and it doesn't work out, I'll have more experience, and I'll be a better person mm -hmm. on the other side of that. Whatever that looks like, I, I don't know, but I'm not scared to do it anymore. Yeah. 
And it's crazy how freeing that can be. And I posted on my Instagram about mayhem because I've been trying to process like, why do I enjoy competing so much now? Mm -hmm. And I don't care about where I finish. Yeah. And I was thinking about it. It's because I'm only competing against myself. Mm -hmm. And I wish I would have realized that at your age, that every day is just me against me. I'm not competing with my friends from high school. I'm not competing with my friends from college. I'm not competing with anybody else in the world. Mm -hmm. It's just every day when I get up, can I be better in business, in life, as a dad, as a husband, as an athlete? Can I just be one little bit better? And if I can just focus on that, then I can have fun with it. Mm -hmm. But if I'm worried about, am I as good of a dad than that person over there? Yeah. Am I as good as a husband as someone? It doesn't matter how mm -hmm. good you are compared to everyone else. I'm not the fittest on earth. I'm not the, you know what I mean? I'm not a professional athlete. All this stuff that you think mm -hmm. about, it's like, just focus on where you are now and just try and be a little bit better. And you can just enjoy that journey and that process, which, yeah. man, it would have saved me a lot of unnecessary stress and worrying. Mm -hmm. And now, even now, I'm glad that I get to do it now. And it, it's amazing how competition reminds you of that. Like, it reminded me when I got back, I was like, this goal was huge. I was in the elite division and we, could, we were able to do every movement and then we were able to, you know, we were competitive on some of the workouts and yeah. I got to do things I'd never thought I would have done. Lifetime PR on the snatch, um, handstand walked 150 feet, um, all this really fun stuff. And I realized I respond better to having massive goals and dreams. Mm -hmm. like that's why Oxfit exists, you know, from failure, from dreaming. I thought I was going to be a professional basketball player. Everyone's been around me, knows this story, but a lot of people, I haven't really had a chance to talk about it, but by me aiming to become a professional basketball player, five foot nine, from England, not very <laughs> athletic, I was able to get out of my town in England and come to America. And never made it, but I got to play against professional basketball players. I got to play in the, one of the biggest summer leagues in America and uh, played on professional teams and uh, just didn't make the NBA. But without that, I would still be in my same small town mm -hmm. doing the same normal things. But I'm living the American dream. I've got an amazing wife. I've got amazing kids. I've got an amazing business, all from failing. Mm -hmm. And I have to keep doing that. If I don't keep doing that, then I just become stagnant. Yeah. And I don't, I'm never fully alive when I'm not chasing something that I'm going to fail at. Mm -hmm. Like right now, having two gyms is great, but it's not scary enough mm -hmm. still, right? Like I'm, st I still have to set something next. And yeah. Because it makes me level up even more. And so it's like mm -hmm. every time you get to do these things, it's awesome because you get to see what you're capable of and you get to see that failure is not really a thing. Right. But it also forces you to be better in everything else. Yeah. And it reveals that, like, you're not really working to your potential in all the other areas of your life. So you got to really step it up. Yeah. You got to go for it over there like you're going for it over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing. Just being, having you as a mentor and, and working here and, doing all the things we do, it's just taught me the importance of constantly having a goal. And now, like you said, I can't, I can't remember what it was like before to not have a goal. What was my goal? Graduating college? Okay. Everyone that, you know what I mean? That's not really. Well, what, for some people, that's huge. Right. But for you, you knew you were going to graduate. Right. So it was just like, get up every day, go to class, do yeah. a study, do my study, and, and I graduate. My goals were what, on paper, should be everyone's goals. It wasn't tailored to what I actually cared about and what would make me better as a person. Well, none of them were actually scary. Yeah. They were there, mm -hmm. but they didn't scare you. They didn't make you wake up in the morning and be like, all right, Savannah, you got to be the best you today to get mm -hmm. through this shit. It was just, if I show up, I'll, I'll graduate. Yeah. And, like, it's not to disrespect people that can't do that yeah. or that that is, but that just wasn't it for you. Mm -hmm. You needed something that was like, all right, I don't know. I don't know if, I'm, I don't know if this is going to work out. Yeah. Because that's when you finally come alive, right? Mm -hmm. Like, 
at the competition, I was kind of comfortable with failing on a lot of events, but one event to go out there, it was almost a one rep max clean for like 50 reps. Yeah. And at that moment, I had to, everything I had to turn on. Mm -hmm. I had to like, all the adrenaline, all the like aggression I can think of, everything that I need, I need it now mm -hmm. for this moment. Last event of the competition. So it's number six, I'm dead. My hamstring's sore, I'm old as shit. You know what I mean? I'm old as hell. So like ibuprofen, 15th caffeine drink. Let's go, we gotta go. And you realize like, even if I went out there and I missed all the reps, mm -hmm. it, it didn't even matter, but I still went out there. Yeah. And that's the thing that I was thinking about is like competition versus failure and how I love to compete against myself now. Mm -hmm. I'm not competing against anybody else. Don't feel like anybody else is out there. In this business, I, I don't care what any gym around here is doing. I just want us to be better. Mm -hmm. than we were yesterday even if we were the best gym that's not best gym compared to what like it was like if we're not showing up and being the best if we're not providing the best service if we're not doing the most events that we know everybody loves then we're not waking up every day and being like all right don't know if this is gonna work out right like what we're working on now every day i get up and i'm like all right here we go let's try this yeah let's get rid of all them bikes buy them bikes why because we're gonna try this We've got to push ourselves. We've got to see if this is going to work. And, um, yeah, you, going and doing scary shit is the only way that you feel that. And I don't want to stop doing that. Mm -hmm. And I need to do it in more areas. In every area of my life, I need something big and scary yeah. to be happening. I like how you said earlier that it's so freeing. Once you break that barrier of not being scared of failure or doing hard things or being uncomfortable, your whole world just opens up. Mm. And you can you constantly find new ways to be better and, and you're not limited by anything. Yep. Well, let me summarize my life up to this point. I wanted to be a professional basketball player in, in the NBA. I dreamed of becoming an NBA player. Didn't make it, mm -hmm. but became a professional basketball player. Lived the American dream, right? First business was a basketball academy. Three years later, $20,000 in debt, the business was gone, right? but learned everything about how not to do business. Mm -hmm. I was doing favors for people, was doing... Everything that I could have done wrong, I did wrong in that first business. Then opened the gym, um, faced all kinds of bullshit trying to get it open, like all kinds of lawsuits, everything that like, okay, well, that made me a better gym owner. Then when I opened a business club, Oxwork, pandemic hit, that's closed. And then full circle back to where we are now. And so, like, it's a whole story of failure, mm -hmm. if you look at it that way. But everything made me better at everything else. And if I didn't do one of them things, this place wouldn't exist. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here now. We wouldn't have these amazing two communities in Grant Park and East Atlanta that we're excited to keep pushing forward and moving on. You know what I mean? So, like... The only failure in all of that is me not wanting to be an NBA player. Because if I didn't, then none of this exists. Yeah. And I don't have the opportunity to work with people like you and all the athletes that we get to work with every day. And the thing is, is like, a lot of people think, and a lot of people say Oxfit's not just a gym. And they feel that it's not just a gym. And where that comes from is, I only do this because I like to see people change and I like to see people set big goals and do things outside of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Cause this is really hard. The workouts are not easy, right? Mm -hmm. The workouts are really hard Yeah. and I don't want them to become easy. Mm -hmm. I want it to be a challenge every day because in that challenge, things happen that happen to you. You got a pull up and your life changed. Mm -hmm. And I've not just seen it once or twice. I've seen it for seven years of people that like, I'll never be able to do that. That's their mentality. They get a pull up, they either quit their job, dump their loser boyfriend or girlfriend. Um, something changes in their life where they go, holy shit, look how strong I am. And things that I never thought I was gonna be able to do, I can do them and I'm gonna try them. Because I walked in and saw how strong I am. And if I can do this hard stuff in the gym, when I get out of here, 
the rest of the world's easy. Mm -hmm. If I can pick that bar up that's my body weight, then whatever's happening at work, whatever's happening in my life, I can handle it. And that is Oxford for mm -hmm. me. People that say, oh, it's too hard for me. The workouts are too hard. The challenges are too hard. To me, they're right. Because it's, it's all mental. Yeah. So if you believe that, mm -hmm. then you're right. It's too hard for you. Whatever we're doing here is too hard for you. Don't even try it because it's too hard. Mm -hmm. But the people that are like, I think I can do that, you're right. You can do it. And whether that's coming in and just working out, whether it's doing a triathlon with us, doing a fitness competition, doing a marathon, you're right. You can fucking do it because there's no failure. All you have to do is show up mm -hmm. and we'll get there and we'll fucking do it. And what happens, happens. The result, we can't control. Mm -hmm. But you coming and doing it, we can control that. Right. And we can show up every day and we can give it our best. And that is Oxford. The fitness takes care of itself, but it's the mental side of what we do here. That is the only reason that I do this. I just love seeing people change. I love seeing them go from, I can't do that, to, I just did a fucking marathon. Mm -hmm. What was your time? What? No, it doesn't matter. Who's the fuck? Right. What do you mean, what was my time? I did a marathon. I just did an Olympic triathlon. Mm -hmm. What was your time? What are you talking about? I did. I went from nothing to doing a triathlon. Mm -hmm. I just competed in a fitness competition. Where'd you finish? What? Yeah. And I've gotten that, it's funny coming back, and I think that's one thing that has helped me process last weekend is people always ask, oh, how'd you guys do? It's like, we did fucking awesome. <laughs> we got last, but that's not the best. point. Like, yeah. when I look at it, and I, it's how did you do, it's that was... Compared to what? Right. How did I do compared to not doing it? Fucking great, because yeah. not doing it would have been awful. Mm -hmm. Seeing the videos of you guys doing it and me not being there, mm -hmm. that would have been awful. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Especially now, knowing the growth that's happening while you're at each of these things. Like, Lauren's doing the triathlon and the marathon this year. I'm furious I'm not doing it. <laughs> you know, I'm yeah. like, dang. I could get better at swimming the next few months. I could get better at riding mm -hmm. a bike. And, mm -hmm. Like, she's just got the, she's got one of them, like, triathlon bike trainers at home now. TV okay. set up. She's ready to, oh, she's well, ready she's to go. It. Oh, yeah, she's yeah. ready to go. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. And that's what that's the changes, right? It's just mm -hmm. mentally you making them changes to be like, I'm going to be my best self. My best self's going to show up in three months to this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, just setting them big goals and them big dreams. And knowing that you have a group of people here that want to know them goals and dreams and want to come and do them with you mm -hmm. is what I love. Yeah. So what was your best moment at the competition? Um, I think the best moment and the hardest moment, I think the snatch was a big moment for me mentally. Just having something go so wrong mm. did not go how we planned at all. And, and kind of the event that you're probably looking forward to the most. Yes. Right? Because... You did the Olympic lifting competition, got injured, mm -hmm. didn't mm -hmm. get to snatch. Mm -hmm. So then you're like, all right, I've done all this strength work and we get to snatch at this competition. Yeah. Watch this. And, and I it love goes the, wrong. I love, especially with the lifts, like you got everyone watching you. I love that adrenaline and I wanted to like, oh, like put on a yeah. show. Even right. if I miss, just yes. like go for something crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So not being able to do that and then still proving to myself that I can execute something in eight seconds amazing i was like yeah. well, that's good enough for me that was yeah. awesome yeah what about the bar muscle ups that must have been a big oh one. those were good yeah yeah and how far did you handstand walk 30 feet three times three times 90 feet 90 yeah. feet yeah but it was unbroken yeah <laughs> you know, i kicked up i was like i'm not coming that's down. amazing yeah yeah it was it was such a cool feeling, and I definitely had a moment where I, you know, was thinking about how far I've come, just coming down from the handstand walk and not even thinking about it, and just jumping up and doing a couple muscle ups and mm. running back to my team. Everybody's cheering, and it's just such a good feeling. Yeah, it makes you want more, right? Yeah. Yeah, you got to be like, okay, that was this. Mm -hmm. Now let's focus on something else for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. 
because you can get to like Wednesday, let's do another competition next week or something like that. I think that's what I love about our program is that we have a whole season. Because mm -hmm. without the whole season, I don't think you get to enjoy these moments as much. Mm -hmm. So we got to enjoy getting really strong and doing the Olympic lifting stuff. And it was a, a season of like strength. And then that rolls into the fitness side of things. Mm -hmm. And then we're going and doing these competitions. And we have that one individual thing to look forward to. And then it's now it's, okay, now let's get the endurance. And by having that season, you become more a complete athlete rather than it be, I feel like I would just be really injured, you know, yeah. and not excited for the next competition. Right. And you also don't know how all of these other goals and seasons of training are going to help you improve. I Mentally mean, too, right? If I had ended last year at Mayhem getting last, I said, all right, for a year, I'm just going to do Metcons and I'm going to be so good at gymnastics. Mm. I don't think I really would have gotten a whole lot better, but yeah. I trained for a marathon. I got really strong and really good at Olympic lifting and then came back around and I had and all these, and yeah, all these and tools to in my belt to help me just be a better athlete. So yeah, it all lends itself to one another without even realizing it. Yeah. I think that's what's missing from some people's training. Mm -hmm. I think they don't have a season. I think they're just constantly on for one certain thing. Mm -hmm. When the beauty of what we do is that you can adapt it to so many different things. Yeah. We can go and do a triathlon. We can go and do a marathon. And then we can come back and get strong again. And then we can go and mm -hmm. do a competition. Like you said, you just have this all-around athlete. Like, that's why I'm excited for some of the other things we've got coming up. Because I think we're going to be really good at them because we're not specialists mm -hmm. at fitnessing for a fitness competition. Mm -hmm. We can adapt to anything. Hey, you want to go run a marathon? Yeah. You want to go do a triathlon? Yeah. You want to go do a, say someone said, hey, there's a hundred mile race. I think we'd be like, all right, let's go. Put on the, you got to wear a backpack? All right, put on the backpack. Like, or you want to go and bike all the way to wherever? All right, I guess. Whatever it is someone's coming up with, we are ready for it. And then, hey, do you want to go play pickleball? Yeah. We've got all the mm -hmm. tools to be a proper athlete rather than just be really good at thrusters and pull-ups. Right. You know? So yeah, it's cool. I had a moment at the competition that I was thinking about, <clears throat> and it was on the beach run. Mm -hmm. And Ben led us off, and he had to do two miles. I had to do like a mile and a half, and Khalil did half thousand a mile. meters. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, Ben was moving when he came mm -hmm. to me, and he gave me the rope, and I had to hold it. And I felt like I was just being dragged at full speed for the rest of the mile and a half. And we were because six minute miles is what we finished. So. Boy, it was moving. And um, as I was running towards the finish, I couldn't really think about anything but trying to breathe. But in my mind, it kept coming back, do you enjoy this stuff? <laughs> like, why are you doing this? Why are you running so hard that your lungs are burning, your feet are hurting, and you, you're running towards this finish line racing people? And I'm 37. I've been doing this shit since I was like 14. I remember my first like cross country or 5K or something like that and just running and being like, why are these people so fast? Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know how to pace at that age. So I'm just like, what is happening? Why is this hurting? I can't think, mm -hmm. I can't breathe. People are cheering for me. That's how it felt. And I was just like, what sick part of your mind enjoys this? And then I was just like, we finished and we got in the ocean or whatever and I had a little swim and I was like, Okay, I know what it is. It's you just seeing what you're capable of mm -hmm. and just pushing as hard as you can. And I've never been the athlete that's finished first. Mm -hmm. But I've always been one that showed back up to do it again, you know? And it's weird that I must enjoy just pushing myself and competing against myself. I've always, like wondered how the people at the front were at the front did you when you, did you do cross country and mm -hmm. stuff like that yeah and you weren't you just like how are they so much faster mm -hmm. at this because i'm running i'm breathing and it, it hurts yeah. i cannot go any faster and like we're only 14 so where did they get this extra yeah. speed from mm -hmm. i don't understand i still don't understand <laughs> do they just not hurt the same as me yeah 
it was always, yeah, I would get frustrated. I did cross country. I was terrible at it, but I did it for oh, four or five years. Yeah. And I, I think it's funny because my friends and I, we would be training. We're like, why do we do this? <laughs> yeah. We're like, we don't want to go run six miles in Florida and it's 90 degrees uh-huh. and it's 3 p.m. We really don't want to be doing this. But I think it is that you want to, with, you know, people you care about, you want to see that you can do hard shit and accomplish your goals. Yeah. And it and, feels great after. Yeah. Afterwards. But then you still get in it and you go, why am I here again? Yeah. Every time. Right. Every Saturday morning, like another one. Okay. Yeah. Every cool. time you come to the gym, right? And you're in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. You're trying to be, why am I doing this again? Oh, for after. The feeling that yeah. I get after. Yeah. And it's just fucking fascinating that I was thinking that. And like, do you enjoy this? And I was like, I must. Mm-hmm. I must enjoy it. And I know, I hear you long. say it sometimes. And I've started saying it more. Like, saying out loud, like, I love this shit. <laughs> like, when you're in the middle of a terrible workout and you don't want to put your hands on a barbell and just yeah. being like, man, I love doing this. <laughs> and just, I mean, in the moment, lying to yourself, but you're not because it's true. Yeah. Um, but you have to have that reminder that, like, you don't have to be here. That is cheaper than therapy, man. Yeah. Like, if <laughs> right. you didn't do it, where would that anger go? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, it's funny. I mean, the same things that we've just been talking about are now in your boyfriend. Yeah. Right? It's like we were able to pass it on to somebody else. Mm-hmm. He came to Mayhem last year and watched. Yes. Carried my bags. Yeah. And should have been doing it, right? Yeah. And then came this year and was on our team mm-hmm. and uh, was really upset that I signed us up for the elite division. Yeah. Uh, never said it to me, but mm-hmm. I think I knew that they were a little upset that we were in the elite. And um, it's probably been the best thing that he's done in the last couple of years, right? In terms of his changing his mindset and seeing mm-hmm. that we finished last. And he did things on that conversation floor that he forgot he could do, or he didn't know he could do. Yeah. And now he knows who he is, and he knows what he's capable of, and he's ready mm-hmm. for more. And I think it's so interesting because I – since all of this happened, he, I think he just has this, like, if, if I can't guarantee that I'm going to be able to give 110% and do it perfectly, I shouldn't do it. But I think we were talking to, I think we were talking to his parents actually, and and talking about how it's okay if it's not 100% there. Mm. there's a saying that like if it's not 110 percent, it's zero percent it's either one or the other all or nothing all or nothing but actually like 80 percent is pretty far from zero 90 percent is really far from zero even 20 percent that's still far away from zero mm-hmm. so not being af- not being afraid to fall short of what you think it should look like is so freeing and i think he finally had that moment where it was only 50% successful on paper, but he realized that that was the perfect, perfect weekend for him. Yeah. And it was successful. It was 100% of what he had. Yes. It wasn't 100% of other people's opinion. Right. That's the difference, mm-hmm. right? And I think one thing that my business coach was talking to me about the other day was this concept of doing B minus work. Mm-hmm. And he was like, if you show up every day, like you just said, and you do B minus work, you're 80% better than you were yesterday. Mm-hmm. It doesn't always have to be 100%. Mm-hmm. And like, I've been very comfortable being that person in a lot of ways in my life. So like college, for example, C's get degrees. For me, yeah. I wasn't there to be the greatest student. Mm-hmm. I just had to get through it. Yeah. So I was like, whatever, C's get degrees. And I was then able to experience the rest of college. Mm-hmm. I wasn't just in the library, you know? Yeah. In terms of athletics and sports, I was all or nothing. Mm -hmm. And in some ways it was great, but in so many ways it was way too intense. Mm -hmm. I was way too focused on things that didn't matter. And I think we get drawn into a lot of them things. Like if I focus just on the bottom line of the gym, I'd probably be closed. But (laughs) the last couple of years, but... 
I would miss everything that we've, all the opportunities in the last three years that have still happened. Just because, oh yeah, financially we went through this horrendous thing. I would have missed, if I, every day I got up and I just went, well, the bottom line doesn't look good. I would have got, I would have missed every experience inside of the gym with you guys and with everything that we've done. Like last year was the best year we've ever had. This year is shaping up to be even better than last year in terms of experiences and connections and community, you know? And so I just think, I don't want to miss them things. Like I want to set these big goals and these big dreams and they're like navigation points. Mm -hmm. But don't get so caught in hitting that thing that you miss it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that's with everything. Everything in your life. If you're looking to get married and all you focus on is getting married, no way you're going to find somebody that wants to marry you. Because <laughs> it'd be way too intense. Mm -hmm. You want to be a professional athlete. Every time you get on that court or stage or whatever it is, it's so intense that you'll fail, mm -hmm. right? You want to be whatever it is in life. If you don't live in the moment and you're constantly being like the result is the only thing that matters, the chance of you getting that result, I think, is way reduced compared mm -hmm. to, all right, I've done the work. Now let's see what happens. Yeah. And, and all the important stuff happened along the way. Right. It doesn't really matter what happens at the end point. This whole journey is where you grew. Yeah. So... Who cares if you fail at the end? Oh, no. I say it all the time. If the gyms are not here in six months, a year, whatever, like, whatever happens with Oxfit, if it goes away, all the stuff that happened in seven, eight years, mm -hmm. they don't go away. No. I remember all them lessons. I've got all them people, all them connections, mm -hmm. all them moments. But if I'm just every day wake up like, oh, no, what are we going to do now? You don't get to enjoy what happens today and what what people you get to be around. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Awesome. I think the last thing I want to leave this podcast with is if you think something that we're doing is too hard for you, you think that the workouts are too hard, you think that you'll never do a triathlon, you'll mm -hmm. never do a marathon, you'll never uh, be fit enough to do a DECA event, then you're right. But if you have one little piece that thinks that you can do something that we're doing, you're right. Mm -hmm. And you should sign up. You should come and do it with us. We'll go have a fucking blast doing it. And you might finish last, but you'll fucking finish. Yeah. And that is what Oxford's all about. Oh, yeah.